And on Guantanamo Bay, the president signed the promised executive order today that will shut down that prison within a year. The message that we are sending around the world is that uh, the United States uh, intends to prosecute uh, the ongoing struggle against violence and terrorism, and we are going to do so vigilantly, we are going to do so effectively, and we are going to do so in a manner that is consistent with our values and our ideals. And joining me now is Democratic Senator Evan Bayh of Indiana. Senator Bayh, thank you so much for making time for us today. Good to be with you. Well, obviously the conversation now turns to what do you do with those detainees? You have 245 men confined there, and we keep hearing over and over you've got some of the worst of the worst or the bad guys, as the catchphrase has been. There's not a plan yet, at least one that's public. What should happen here? They're going to be uh, put into three different categories, uh, Tamron. First, those that can be sent back to their home countries or a third country that's willing to take them in in a secure environment, uh, we'll be sending some of them there. But you've got to make sure they're actually going to be kept in a secure environment and not released into the general public. So that's number one. Number two, some, there's enough evidence we can actually put them on trial uh, in the United States of America under our justice system, send them to jail for crimes against the United States. Number three, and this is the hard category, there are some who we've determined to be dangerous or potentially dangerous to our country, but we don't yet have enough evidence to put them on trial, and they're kind of taking a wait-and-see approach with regard to that category. There's going to be a commission that's going to look into perhaps some new form of uh, criminal justice procedures to deal with that third category. And that is so intriguing to many people, this new form, or what do you do with those third people on a trial there? Um, Proposal-wise, uh, that perhaps you may have knowledge of and we do not, what sounds best to you as an effective plan here? I think the president has uh, struck the right balance. Uh, you know, we've gotten uh, George Bush's Secretary of Defense, uh, Robert Gates, recommended closing down Guantanamo because he knows we've paid a terrible price internationally because of the reputation the facility has received. Uh, but then the question is, what do you do about those who remain? And I think the president struck the right balance. Uh, you know, you got to try and uh, protect the country. That's obviously job number one. But do it in a way that's consistent with our values. That's where the uh, criminal justice procedures come in for those who can be put on trial and a new form of procedure with due process for those uh, who currently cannot. What do you say to those uh, within particularly Republicans and some conservatives out there and even the uh, former Vice President Dick Cheney who say you and the new president just have it wrong, that there is a place for something like Guantanamo Bay and, and what they've done, including the harsh interrogations, work to protect this country? Well, those are two different issues. Number one, I mean, he is right. You have to have uh, secure prison facilities. They're evil people, bad people, dangerous people. They have to be locked away so that the public isn't jeopardized. The, the problem with uh, Guantanamo, Cameron, fairly or unfairly, it became a symbol for the rest of the world about what they perceived to be wrong with the United States. So let's take that symbol away. Let's restore our rightful position as a country that is better than our allies when it comes to ethics and morality but use uh, detention facilities, prisons, that don't carry the stigma of Guantanamo. So you can have the one and the other. You don't have to choose one or the other, which Vice President Cheney seems to imply. The interrogation techniques, you know, that's a little bit different. Uh, the President has recommended, uh, through the executive order, he's actually implemented the Army Field Manual, which our military people say has worked very well for interrogations in that setting. And in the case we don't torture people, that's against the law. Uh, for things that go beyond the Army Field Manual but aren't tortured, that in-between area, the President always has the power in a case of emergency to do what it takes uh, to protect the country. Uh, and so he does retain that ability, but we're making a strong statement that we treat people humanely, that we only resort to harsher methods when that is absolutely necessary to protect the country, and uh, under any circumstances, we don't torture people. Our White House Chief Correspondent Chuck Todd was just on, and he said, you know, really what we saw today gives, uh, is, is typical or, or typical of the new president in that he has enough openings there, and there are enough things there that both the left and the right can criticize. But I want to ask you quickly about the criticism uh, of the, getting from law makers saying they don't want these detainees in their backyard. They don't want them in Kansas. They don't want them at other installations possibly within this country. Well, I understand that feeling, and we should place as many of them as possible in their home countries or third countries that are willing to take them in. Uh, if there are problems in the detention facilities here, I mean, we, murderers, rapists, uh, other criminals, uh, if there are problems, uh, we ought to correct those problems and not say that, well, we're worried about some people escaping or that sort of thing. That should never happen, regardless of whether it's a domestic criminal 
or a potential terrorist of some kind. The American people have to be protected. So if the individuals who are complaining have you know, cause for concern about their institutions, tell us. They ought to be corrected. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking to us on all of these things breaking. And I hope to be able to talk to you next month to talk about your bill promoting responsible fatherhood. So let's make a date to talk about that next month. Let's do it on Father's Day. Perfect. I, think, I can't think of a better day. <laughs> thank you very much. Take care.